All right, today I'm talking about uh, ChatGPT. So ChatGPT recently came into the space and it has been making a lot of waves. Most people have been using it for different purposes. But in this video, I'll be talking about how you can use ChatGPT for academic writing in a way that does not compromise the quality of the work that you do. So it's important to understand that if you misuse ChatGPT, it's going to affect your work and it's going to lead to poor academic um, writing. So how do you use ChatGPT ethically? If you can use this, this tool very well, it's going to help you to improve your writing. But it's important for you to know that you don't just generate information from ChatGPT and use it directly in your work. So I'm going to give you some use cases where ChatGPT can help you to improve your writing. Now, some of the use cases is like background knowledge. If you want to, you know, get some information about a topic, for instance, you want to get information on distracted driving. I know there's a lot of papers you can read online that tells you what distracted driving is, but you just want to have an idea of what distracted driving is. For, for someone who is not... Um, who, is, who doesn't do research in traffic safety, you want to just have a general idea of distracted driving. Maybe you are, right, you are doing a work and there is a part that requires you to write about distracted driving. If you are looking at distracted driving, what are actions that can lead to distracted driving? If you are texting while you are driving or if you are operating the electronics, the radio while you are driving or you are talking with someone while you are driving, or you are watching a movie on the screen while you are driving, or you are observing what is happening outside your car while driving, that can lead to distractions. So these are the background knowledge. It can give you what distracted driving is all about. So with that, you can build on it to know what papers you should start to explore and what keywords should you use when exploring those articles. And also it's, ChatGPT can help you to paraphrase. Paraphrasing is an important aspect of ChatGPT. So when you write something or you, you, are, you, are, you are writing an article, you come across some ideas that, has been written, that people have written about, then you want to rewrite such and cite it, you need to paraphrase. It will help you to, to do that. And also another way to paraphrase is, for instance, you have a draft of your work, so, you have a draft of your work, but you want to structure it. ChatGPT can help you to structure your work. It can help you to put it in paragraphs and all that. So, you can also use ChatGPT for that. Then, referencing is another aspect where ChatGPT is useful. For instance, if you have your referencing in a particular format, and you want ChatGPT to help you put it in another format, you can also do that. So, you just indicate the format. You want it to to um, to use for for that, and most people have started using ChatGPT to write codes. So ChatGPT is very powerful. It can if you if you are able to ask the right question or give him the right prompts, it can generate codes for you. So with those codes, you can modify it to suit what you want to do and all that. So these are basic use cases of. Um, ChatGPT for academic writing. There are many more things ChatGPT can do. Most time, it doesn't generate authentic references or like citation to paper. If you are asking him to generate references for a particular field, it might generate fake references. So it's not usually a good tool to use for that. So let's dive into it. How you can apply this to to your work. So this is. ChatGPT my account. If you don't have an account with ChatGPT, you need to create an account. So once you've created an account, I have my interface here. So now, let's say I want to talk about, I want to ask a question about distracted driving. You can see there are some examples here already. Explain quantum computing in simple terms. It can go on and do all those things for you. You know, so you can ask any question. So Explain, you can say explain distracted 
driving so it will generate information on distracted driving so these are basic information it can generate for you and it gives you an idea of what distracted driving is all about and the dangers of distracted driving so most of it is like testing checking social media browsing the internet while driving and those can lead to crashes or road accidents if you want to call it accident but we call it crashes in our field so these are basic if you want it to regenerate you can click regenerate and it will give you something a bit different from what you have given you before so this can this is an idea of what distracted driving is you can see mobile phone eating or drinking adjusting the radio or navigating system talking to passenger or engaging in other activities that takes driver's hand eye or mind away from driving so it gives you some statistics of number of people that has died as a result of distracted driving in 2018 and it tells you that that was published by center for disease control and prevention so this was published by the nhtsa then there's another publication by cdc that nine people are killed and more than 1000 people are injured every day in the united states as a result of distracted driving so this statistic can serve as a background for your write-up so you can use you can quote these statistics in your introductions so this is an idea of what um, distracted driving is happening so now every year there is a publication by this administration nsdsa um, so this is for 2018 if you are working on a recent paper you might need to get the numbers for 2022 so you can go to their website you will get the updated numbers for 2022 so this is how you can use it for background knowledge on a topic so any topic you want you can search for it now the next thing is how to use it for paraphrasing if you look here now you see this is auto generated now you want to have uh, you want to be sure that what you are writing does not look similar to what someone else is writing because if you take this directly here now another person might have used something similar to this now aside from you generating these responses you might have your own work that you have written you have drafted and you want to rewrite it in another format now for instance let me use this word here so this is an abstract of one of the paper i'm writing so i can ask chat gpt to paraphrase that work for me so what i need to do is to come here i will write rewrite if i had to rewrite i will paste it so once i paste it it's going to rewrite that for me you can see it has rewritten it the same thing but it's writing in another format now you can see that it's kind of shorting it so this is the same thing you can also ask him to regenerate the response and it will do that for you you can see that so now it is left for you to copy this one thing you need to understand also is that most time the keywords that ShaGPT might use is not directly like popular in your field for instance if i ask ShaGPT to, to write something and it's writing crashes as accidents i'll have to go back and write it to crashes because accident is not popular it's not well acceptable in my in my field road accident we don't call it accident we call it crashes so crashes is something that can that is avoidable that is preventable but an accident is can be considered not preventable so that's why we use the word crashes instead of accident now this is paraphrase so so now you see what restructuring simply means is 
I've written a bunch of words here. Remember, this is an abstract, right? This is an abstract. So an abstract does usually you don't need to put them in paragraphs. Now, but assuming it's not an abstract, I've written a lot of stuff. I didn't put it in a paragraph. I can restructure it. So what I would tell him is, remember what I typed here is restructure. So I first type restructure. It didn't work because this is my first time trying this out. But I know one thing about Shajit P is very smart. So whatever you tell him to do, he understand most of the time. So I did restructure, it didn't work, I did paragraph. So I type paragraph and pasted my abstract here. And you can see I've broken it down into three paragraphs. So that's how you can restructure your work. So while you are writing, you can just go on and keep writing if you don't have a good idea of how to break it down into paragraphs. So ChatGPT can help you to break it down into paragraphs. So you've taken this thing and broke it down into these paragraphs. So that's what restructuring is about. Now let's check out references. Now, let's say I have a reference that is in a format. I can ask ChatGP to, to convert that references to a particular format. Now, I want to see if there's a difference between APA and Chicago Manual of Star. So, so it's almost the same thing. All right. So these are ways you can convert it. So once you've done that, like this APA standard, you just copy it, you copy that, you copy it, and you go and uh, paste it where you want to paste it. So maybe here is where you want to paste it. Come here, you paste, and that's it. So that's how you reference. Now, the other thing you can do is to write a code. So you can say um, area of a circle in R. So this is just basic example where your radius is five. You can find the area of a circle in R. So that's um, you can also decade Python. Let's say plot bar shot in R. So if you if you know the code you want to generate, you can easily. If you have an idea of the code, you can give him a prompt and it will help you to generate that code. So those are basic things you can do with Sharp GPT. I hope this is helpful to you. If you have any question, drop it in the comment section and I will try to attend to them. Have a lovely day. Bye.